In this video series, I'm going to review the installation process on a Mac in order to get my configuration of NeoVim set up on your machine and ready to write LaTeX documents. In a future video series, I'll also cover how to configure your config of NeoVim for yourself, adapting the configuration to your exact needs. All right, so you can see all these config files here. So this is what we're going to pull down onto your machine. Um, and you can see that I have all these installation instructions for different operating systems. Um, I'm just going to focus on Mac here. I unfortunately don't have access to a Windows machine. If you're interested in troubleshooting the installation process on Windows, feel free to open an issue. Uh, do check to see that someone hasn't already done so. Um, if they have, you can then join that issue. Um, and yeah, I'd be happy to help you troubleshoot and hopefully we can add um, installation instructions for Windows installers. Okay, but focusing on Mac, um, I would recommend that you begin by updating your operating system and installing Brew. So Brew is gonna be the main way that we're gonna install different packages from the terminal. And you can check to see if you have brew with dash dash version. So I already have installed and I actually have all of these little uh, bits and pieces already installed on this machine. So you don't have to wait, you know, watching me install them uh, slowly and tediously. Um, but what I don't have on this machine is all of these configuration files. So I'm going to explain how to pull those down and get everything all up and running. And I'm also going to provide some kind of overview of this process. Uh, reading between the lines a little bit, giving you a sense of what all the different pieces are doing. So yeah, brew is going to be the main way that we're going to install uh, different bits and pieces. And if you do have not already installed, I recommend that you update it. Uh, if you want, you can run brew doctor, it takes a little while. Uh, this is definitely optional. And if you want, you can also upgrade the other packages that you've uh, already installed with brew, um, assuming you have it installed already. If you don't have brew installed, then you can install it with these two commands. Um, Xcode will take a while to install, but is absolutely essential. So um, yeah, you have to wait through that process. Um, shouldn't take too, too long, and hopefully you don't have any errors. Uh, if you do have errors, uh, you're gonna have to look carefully at what the error messages are and, and troubleshoot those, but um, it should go smoothly. Um, I've never had any trouble with it. Okay, the last little uh, starting piece of advice, I definitely recommend switching your caps lock and exit keys. So we're gonna use the escape key all the time um, and the caps lock key I never use and it's right in prime real estate. So it's on the left of my keyboard, just left of my pinky. So it's very easy to switch these on a Mac. Um, you just go into the keyboard area and if you go to modifier keys, then you can move these all around. Um, the one other recommendation I, I make is to put control, the control key in a really good spot. Um, yeah, I think ergonomics, you know, you're gonna be using control all the time. And if it's not very convenient, uh, you know, it's gonna lead to bad hand posture. And um, yeah, you might as well get yourself set up with a comfy uh, layout right now before you dive into really uh, using this config so that the muscle memory um, is there from the beginning. Uh, where the other keys, the function and, and so on, those keys go, I think is less important, but getting control and exit in good places, uh, very important. Okay, and one other piece, which is also optional, is using the fish shell. So that's why my terminal looks the way it does over here. Um, if I was just inside bash, it would look something like this. And, you know, Bash will work just as fine, just as well for you, but it doesn't look quite as nice. And you know, if I spell something wrong, it's not gonna tell me. Whereas if I run fish, then if I you know spell something wrong, it will show up in red. Um, it also allows me to autocomplete, so I can use the right arrow key to just hop right through to the end. Um, and lots of other features, which we won't really necessarily need, but the autocomplete itself is just really nice to have especially if you're unfamiliar working inside the terminal. So I do recommend that you install fish and it's not hard to do. Um, you can use brew, install fish, 
that's it. Um, I also recommend you install oh my fish and you can run that using this curl command. And then I've installed the theme sashimi, which is make, what makes the terminal prompt look the way it does. Um, doesn't take very much work and you know, it will just make this process a little bit smoother and um, yeah, more pleasing to the eyes. So I also explain how to remove the greeting, um, which you know I personally don't need, and how to make the um, fish your default shell. And so that's also pretty easy. Um, yeah, with this command here, and you add it to your list of shells, um, running this command. And if you want, you can turn on the Vim key bindings inside fish. I don't personally do this. I find it a little bit cumbersome, but you can do if, if you want to. Okay, so uh, we can now proceed to install all the dependencies that we'll need for NeoVim. Uh, so you definitely have Git already installed, but you can just check uh, to see that you do. And if for some reason you don't have it installed, you can install that now. And we're also gonna install lazy Git, which makes Git just a lot easier to use, and it's gonna play a role inside the config of NeoVim. So I'm gonna have some key bindings to open up lazy Git inside NeoVim. And yeah, it's a very useful tool. So definitely wanna get that in place. And then we also have uh, Node and Python 3. So you should already have Python 2 installed, but you can check to see if you have Python 3 um, and install it like this uh, if you don't have it installed. And then also a nerd font. And so what a nerd font is going to allow you to do is to show icons inside the terminal. And that's going to be useful inside the file tree, where different file types will have corresponding icons. And if you don't have a nerd font, those icons will show up with little error characters and that's just going to muddy things and it's nice to have those. So I recommend installing a nerd font now um, and you can do that also using brew. And then once you have the nerd font installed, assuming you're using just the stock Mac terminal, you're going to go into the preferences and you can see here I have Roboto mono nerd font. Um, already selected, but you can change and you can find your nerd font that you've installed um, and, and then you should be good to go. Okay, and then lastly, you can run through these, just make sure you have all of these in place. Um, Pandoc will also play an important role in the config later on. Um, I'll have some key bindings for that so you can convert between file types, converting LaTeX to Word and, and what have you. Um, so that's an important piece. And so yeah, run through these, make sure you have them all installed, and then you will be ready to install NeoVim. Okay, and we're also gonna install NeoVim using brew, running this command. And so once you have it installed, you can then open up NeoVim like this. And you can see it's very austere. Um, you know, this is NeoVim. Uh, if I go into insert mode, I can yank, I can paste, paste a whole bunch of times. Um, I can visually select, I can delete. So it is NeoVim, um, it's just a very austere version of it. And we're gonna change that by pulling down all those configuration files. But before doing so, let's check health. So I'm gonna go into command mode with colon and then uh, type check health. And this may take a minute or so. And you can see I have some warnings here. So it says Go not available. And that's fine, because I'm not trying to program inside Go. Um, and similarly for many of these other ones. Um, if you want, you can install all these little bits and pieces, but it's not necessary at all. So I, I don't recommend doing so. What you do want to check is that you don't have any errors. And those should show up in red. And if you do have errors, then it will give you a little piece of advice uh, how to avoid that error. And you can see sometimes the advice is, you know, has quite a bit to say. So um, try to follow the advice, uh, do some searching if you need to, some troubleshooting, um, and get all of those errors sorted out until your check health looks something like mine, which is in good shape. Um, all right, so let's quit out of here with colon Q. And we can quit out of NeoVim again with colon Q. 
Uh, I did make some changes here. So it's saying no right since last change. So let's do colon Q exclamation point to force quit uh, without, without saving. Okay, if you had any errors for Python 3, um, you might try running this command. Um, that might sort things out. Um, but yeah, some troubleshooting may be required uh, if you have persistent errors. Okay, and the last piece that we're gonna add um, in order to extend the functionality of vanilla NeoVim is to install Packer. And that's gonna be our package manager allowing us to uh, install plugins and yeah, it's gonna just vastly extend the functionality of NeoVim. And so you're gonna run that with this command. And then that is it. You are ready to begin to pull down configuration files, which I'm gonna explain in the following video. Um, in a future video series, I'll also explain how to edit those configuration files for yourself, um, adapting the configuration to your exact needs. So stay tuned for that.